Good evening. Thanks for joining us back here for our studies in the Old Testament. We're in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 7. We've been following the saga of the ark, who was supposed to be uh, at Shiloh, where the tabernacle was, but they've taken it into battle, and they've got it captured, and the Philistines passed it around everywhere it went. It was a plague to them and um, destroyed their statue of Dagon, and it's ended up... Uh, Nobody wants it. Even uh, Israel's a little afraid of it here. But uh, it picks up chapter 7. We're going to see what happens. If you, treat, if you treat God right, he'll treat you right. And the ark was a symbol of God's presence with them. So uh, you do what he's supposed to do and do it the right way, and God will bless you. And that's what's happening to, here in chapter 7. The ark comes to the house of a man named Abinadab. And the men of kirjath Jerem came, and they fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it to the house of Abinadab in the hill. And they sanctified a man named Eliezer. And to sanctify Eliezer means that he was set apart for a special service. Anything, uh, I said, uh, the, the tabernacle uh, utensils and things, they were, they were sanctified. It's kind of like uh, things we use today even in the modern church, uh, the uh, communion ware or the offering plates themselves anything like that that's set aside is set aside for a special purpose that makes it different than a dinner plate it's for the special service of God Eliezer was set aside for a special purpose of God and today we say well all Christians are sanctified by the Holy Spirit we're set apart for the service of God so Eliezer was sanctified or set apart his son to keep the ark of the Lord, Samuel's son, Eliezer. And it, or not Samuel's son, yeah, it was. And it and came to pass while the ark abode in kirjath Jerem, that the time was long, for it was there 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Lamented is um, another word for mourning. There's a book over uh, around the book of Jeremiah called Lamentations. And it's about a time of mourning for Israel. Uh, this time Israel was lamenting or mourning because they didn't have the presence of God with them anymore. They didn't have the Ark of the Covenant in their possession anymore. It was way over here in kirjath Jerem, staying at Abinadab's house. So they began after 20 years to uh, long for God again, so to speak. And Samuel, verse 3, spake unto the house of all Israel, saying, If you do... If you do return unto the Lord with all your heart, that's the problem we got today. I think too many people want to want to follow the Lord with part of their heart. But if you'll return to God with all your heart, then you'll do this. You'll put away the strange gods of Ashtaroth. That's the Philistines' gods from among you. In other words, you may, if you want the Lord to be your Lord, he's got to be number one. That's what it means to say Jesus is Lord. He's my number one boss. <laughs> Not, not him and something else, or he's not an afterthought if something else gets in the way. He's number one. He's the most important thing. So if you'll put, uh, follow God with all your heart and put away the strange gods and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only, and the key word here is only, serve him only, he'll deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines or he will bless you, Christian. But you've got to put him first and serve him only. He can't be beside something else or behind something else and expect God to bless you. But verse 4 is a good verse. It says, Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth of the false gods, and they served the Lord only. And Samuel said, uh, Gather all Israel to Mizpah. Come up to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And you notice verse 5 follows verse 4, not the other way around. Samuel said, uh, you want me to pray for you? I'll pray for you. But he didn't do it until he, they showed that they were serious about this. And when they followed the Lord with all their heart, he said, I'll pray for you to the Lord then. Verse 6. And they gathered together to Mizpah, and they drew water, and they poured it before the Lord. This is a type of Old Testament worship. They worshiped the Lord, and they fasted on that day, and they confessed. They said, we've sinned against the Lord. So they worshiped, they fasted, and they fasted and confessed. We've sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. Verse 7. And when the Philistines heard the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. They're all gathered up there, boys. Let's go whoop them, the Philistines said. 
And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, You keep praying for us. Cease not to cry unto the Lord God for us, that he'll save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel did. He, Samuel took a sucking lamb. He took a, a young lamb. And he offered it for a burnt offering to the Lord. And Samuel cried to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. So the Lord heard him through the sacrifice. Now, we live in the New Testament age. You, you can go to the Lord through the sacrifice. You don't have to go out there and find a, a little sucking lamb because the lamb of God's already died. He's already suffered for you. And you can come through him. His name's Jesus and to the, and to the Lord. And you can, uh, you can talk to the Lord. That's what Samuel's doing here in Old Testament style, which was pointing toward the New Testament for us. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines, and he discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. Israel won because uh, they got their heart. Remember, we've been reading about this. They can't figure out why every time they fight the Philistines against when the, the numbers were on their side or anything else, they were smitten. They got whipped, and now they got right with God. And they found out, hey, God's on our side. And God will be on your side as long as you're on God's side. But you can't ask God to be on your side when something else is your God over here and you're not giving your full attention to giving, serving the Lord with all your heart. So God discomfited them and they were smitten before Israel. Verse 11, and the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and he pursued the Philistines and smote them. Okay, this tells me something about the battle, right? The Philistines were discomfited, they were smitten, and now they're smote. <laughs> they're, they're, they're whooped. They were all the way until they came to a place called Bethkar. And let's bring this over to the evening news. All this battle that's going over there in the Middle East right now between Israel and the Palestinians who are the descendants of the Philistines in the same cities of, of Gaza and Ekron, these old Philistinian cities, uh, it's sort of the same thing, ain't it? That um, the, the battle's still going on, and, and uh, I, I believe them... Uh, them Hamas people, the, we need to do anything we can do as, uh, as Americans too because them people need to be discomfited, smitten, and smote. That, that evil needs to be eradicated. And uh, God's involved in every battle whether people think it or not. And it, <laughs> so then Samuel took a stone, verse 12, and, 12, and he set it up between Mizpah and Shen. And he called the name of it Ebenezer. We sing a Christian song that says, Here I'll raise my Ebenezer. Hither by thy help I've come. And Samuel set it up, and Ebenezer means here God has helped us. He put a monument up where that great battle was won by Israel. And he said, we're going to put a monument up and always remember and tell our children that when they see that stone that here's where God gave us the victory over the Philistines. And as Christians, we can look back in our life and see all these different places. And the first one's where we first got in at when we come to the cross and we trusted the Lord. And you say, boy, I can raise an Ebenezer right there because God helped me. And then you can look through difficult times and things you've come through in your life. And you said, what, well, I can put up an Ebenezer. I can mark the place right there in my mind too because I know God helped me through that. And it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. But that, there's another Ebenezer. And remember these things. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Verse 13, so the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more to the coast of Israel. That's what we want to happen over there right now. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. I'm telling you, that evil that's going on over there right now, the hand of the Lord's against them Hamas people too. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron to Gath, to the coast thereof, did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and their other enemies, the Amorites. And the reason there's peace is, it's, it's a, was it Ronald Reagan that first used this term? Uh, maybe it, I may be attributing it to the wrong one, but whoever it was was exactly right. It's a, peace occurs through strength. As long as you look weak to your enemies, you can't expect peace, but they, they can be peace through strength. And that's what happened when peace finally come to Israel back then is that the, everybody heard about what they did to the Philistines and said, uh, we're going to make peace too. We're not going to mess with them. Verse 15, and Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. Verse 16, Samuel went year to year in circuit around all these different cities. Samuel was a circuit riding judge. <laughs> 
he went to Bethel, Gilgal, Mizpah, he, all these Israeli cities, and he judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, because that's where he lived at. There was his house, his home. Now, here's an important thing. Don't, it's our last half of our last verse, but let's don't run by it here. He lived in Ramah. There was his house or home. And you know what Samuel had at his house and home? There was an altar he built to the Lord. So Samuel knew that uh, wherever you live, you better have a place to worship right there nearby too. I hope you do. See you next time.